Hello, everybody. This is Bishop Barron. I'm speaking to you, first of all, to draw attention to a wonderful article that appeared in the Wall Street Journal, written by Archbishop Corleone of San Francisco and my own Archbishop, Jose Gomez of Los Angeles. It's in reaction to this really ridiculous, uh, terrible piece of legislation that, to my mind, incredibly has made it through both houses of the California legislature, is now on the, on the desk of the governor to be signed. Read the article by these two archbishops, but I want to add my own perspective here. Just to give you a little background, um, go back last summer, the summer of 2020, when the whole culture was being convulsed. And there was a group that went to the Capitol grounds in Sacramento. They defaced a statue of Junipero Serra. They burned it. They knocked it down. They stomped on it. So it was this, you know, great reaction against uh, Junipero Serra. So this piece of legislation is now calling for the erection of a statue that honors the native peoples. And of course, nothing in the world wrong with that. But as part of it, and I'm going to read this to you, part of it is a absolute calumny against Junipero Serra. Mind you, this is our state legislature in California. Let me read you the relevant section. Enslavement of both adults and children, mutilation, genocide, and assault on women were all part of the mission period initiated and overseen by Father Sarah. <laughs> Everybody, this is breathtaking calumny against a man who not 500 years ago, five years ago, was canonized a saint by Pope Francis, a saint of the Catholic Church, being accused of the most outrageous possible crime, genocide. Now, consult the historians. I mean, Junipero Serra was someone who was reverenced by the native people, deeply mourned upon his death, someone who defended the rights of the native peoples. As the archbishops point out, who made a journey on foot all the way to Mexico City to encourage the writing of a Bill of Rights to support the native peoples. So, I mean, the calumny here against Serra personally is obvious and outrageous. But here's the thing, everybody, that particularly concerns and bothers me. I don't know how you construe this other than a deep form of anti-Catholicism. There's one of the missions, uh, the great mission in Santa Barbara, it's about five minutes from where I'm standing. I think of the last mission that Sarah founded in my pastoral region down in Ventura. The mission of Santa Inez is just over the mountains up here, about 45 minutes. That these missions are being construed now as like antebellum uh, homes in, in, uh, in pre-Civil War South where slavery was uh, carried on. And even worse, may I just say it because the language is here, they're being construed as the moral equivalent of Dachau and Auschwitz. I mean, this is beyond outrageous as calumny, but here's my point. Anti-Catholicism is a deep strain within our American culture. Go right back to the colonial period. Look at Catholics fighting for their, their right and their voice in those days. It reached a kind of terrible climax in the 19th century when convents and the Catholic schools and parishes and so on were burned to the ground when political parties were organized precisely as anti-Catholic. Read speeches by Ulysses Grant at the end of the 19th century, fiercely anti-Catholic. Read speeches by Woodrow Wilson, the great progressive leader in the early 20th century, fiercely anti-Catholic. So this strain, mind you too, the Ku Klux Klan, everyone knows, organized against black people, but also against Jews and, and against Catholics. This strain, like a lot of bad things, tends not to disappear but to go underground and then to resurface. I don't know how you read this any other way, but as a very deep and dangerous form of anti-Catholicism. So listen to me, especially those hearing me in California. Make your voices heard. Don't let this kind of language come to the desk of the governor to be signed into law that someone we canonized, Pope Francis canonized five years ago, is now being characterized as the moral equivalent of Stalin and Hitler. We got to raise our voices, everybody, against this. And I would say, finally, anybody, anybody in our country concerned about religious liberty should be concerned about this kind of language. They're coming for us now. Who knows when they'll come for you? And so I say this not just as a Catholic, I say it as an American concerned about religious liberty. So read the article by the two archbishops and raise your voice against this.